Few 2024 GOP presidential hopefuls are bringing in the kind of cash that South Carolina Senator Tim Scott is. But no other candidate is spending it as quickly as he is either. According to the latest FEC filing, Scott's campaign is the only one spending money faster than it's coming in. It is important to note a sizable portion of Scott's war chest is left over from his Senate race. Former Republican Senator Cory Gardner joins us now. He is currently the co-chair of a super PAC backing Senator Tim Scott's 2024 presidential bid. It is so great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. So as you well know, the money is pouring in for Tim Scott, but he's also spending it quite fast. Is that turning into votes, do you think? Well, it certainly is. And all you have to do is look at the polling, whether it's Iowa, New Hampshire, you see it in the national polls as well. Uh, this is a candidate who came from zero, one percent to double digits right now uh, and is gaining on other candidates. And I think the, the telltale factor of what's happening in this race is who is pointing their attacks at who. Uh, and right now they're turning their guns, their attacks uh, on Tim Scott. And that's simply because he is doing well. He is getting those voters. They see his fundraising and that's having a, a, a tremendous impact uh, in these early states. Um, he is certainly gaining in the polls, but the latest New York Times um, Siena College poll that came out last week shows that Donald Trump is at 44 percent, Ron DeSantis at 20, and Tim Scott sits at 9 percent. So he's still trailing quite a bit. What do you think the turning point is going to be for him to you know, be on DeSantis or Trump's heels? Well, look, I think the turning point is Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, South Carolina, the early states that will be going to primaries and caucuses. Uh, we have a long campaign ahead of us. Uh, every day is a slog. Uh, and that's what we continue to fight for. And if you look at his response, the responses he's receiving in Iowa, the crowds that he's seen, the people who are coming out in support of him, it, it really is a tremendous. Look, uh, you see uh, the, the leaders. We always knew that Donald Trump was the leader. And we've known that. We've known that this is a tough race. But but you've seen those numbers come down. You've certainly seen the second place numbers come down, Ron DeSantis, and you've seen uh, Tim Scott numbers go up. Uh, I believe that is not just a, a momentary uh, thing. I think you'll see that as a trend and it will continue. Uh, we're doing all of the work that we need to uh, to support Tim. Uh, and certainly his campaign is doing everything they have to do to get the message out. Um, and I should have clarified, those numbers were um, for Iowa Republican voters' preference for president as of now. Um, I, I want to talk about the strategy so far, because Tim Scott is clearly, you know, building his entire campaign around positivity, around not being negative and sort of this optimism that we have not seen. Um, but it's it's not exactly working. And I do want to ask specifically about the indictments against former President Trump, because um, Senator Scott has not attacked him, has not explicitly even talked about these indictments against Trump. And I wonder why not. Well, Tim's running his campaign. Uh, Tim Scott is uh, presenting his case to the American people. He's not presenting Donald Trump's case. He's not presenting Ron DeSantis's case. He is presenting an optimistic conservative message for the people of this country. Uh, look, I think candidates spend a great deal of time trying to figure out how to be uh, authentic. Uh, Tim doesn't need a poll uh, to show what authenticity means. He is that. He exudes that. Uh, and to do anything other than an optimistic message for uh, the people of this country, I think, would send a sour note to people, voters in Iowa and New Hampshire and across the country. And so he is going to focus on his message. He is going to focus on his campaign, uh, let the other races do what they will or go where they will go. But the fact is, Tim Scott can make this country feel good about itself again. Uh, Republicans and Democrats can come together under a message of opportunity and vision that Tim has, whether it's uh, educational choice and opportunity, whether it's economic empowerment. That's what Tim Scott believes. And I think anything else would be off note. And that's why you see him stick to that message of positivity. And doing that, you know, in Iowa, in the community is one thing. But on the debate stage, as you very well know, is another, especially when he is going to be surrounded by other, um, you know, Republican hopefuls who are ready to tear into it. I mean, do you think he's going to be able to maintain this um, this messaging and this optimism without attacking well, look, I don't think he, Tim Scott is not somebody who's going to attack somebody simply because he wants to get ahead of them 
uh, in a race. He's going to share his differences. He's going to contrast the, the strengths and weaknesses of who he believes he is, it, where his message goes, and how he is a better leader, better situated, better suited to be president of the United States. Uh, that is going to be with conservative values. He's the most conservative person in this race. He is going to do it with positivity and optimism for this country. Uh, I think there is room in this nation uh, for points of light uh, instead of fear and attacks. Uh, and that's what uh, I think you'll see Tim Scott do. Now, there's no doubt uh, that this debate is going to draw some contrast. And there's no doubt uh, that uh, I have no doubt that Senator Scott will not be afraid to show those differences and those contrasts. And so uh, if you're in uh, Milwaukee on August 23rd, we look forward to uh, you hearing this message from Tim Scott. And certainly, I think the people around the country are going to be surprised, impressed. Uh, and the day after, we'll have even more support for Senator Scott, Tim Scott, going forward. Well, no doubt he is preparing for the debate. You guys are clearly focused on Iowa for now. But talk to me about what comes after Iowa. What states are you going to be spending a lot of time in? Yeah, look, I think it's spending a lot of time again in Iowa, uh, spending a lot of time in New Hampshire. It's no surprise where uh, he'll, he will turn to after the debates to uh, talk about uh, the, the great message that he shared. Uh, I know he's going to be across the country, coast to coast, leaving no corner of our country uh, un, unturned uh, and under underexplored. Uh, this is an opportunity for Tim to really highlight uh, what he talked about at the campaign, to go back into Iowa, to go across uh, the counties uh, and to share that message, to build on it, to expound on it. You heard him talk about the border uh, at a recent visit to uh, Yuma, Arizona. Uh, you'll hear him talk, I believe, about some of the most important issues facing this country at the debate. Uh, and in the days following, uh, he will continue to expound on that in Iowa, New Hampshire and beyond. Well, we will be tracking it. Thank you so much, former Senator Cory Gardner. We really appreciate your Thanks, time. Thank you.